This is English shorthand dictation number 257 and the dictation speed is 160 volts per minute. Ready? Start. There are several parliamentary devices for raising matters of public importance. Calling attention is one of these devices. Under this procedural device, a member has to take prior permission of the speaker to call the attention of a minister to any matter of urgent public importance and the minister may make a brief statement thereon. There shall be no debate on such a statement at the time it is made. After the statement, brief clarifications can be sought from the minister by the member who has initiated the calling attention and other members whose names appear in the list of business are called by the speaker. Only those matters which are primarily the concern of the union government can be raised through a calling attention notice. The calling attention procedure is an Indian innovation which combines asking a question with supplementary questions and making brief comments. The government also gets adequate opportunity to state its case. The calling attention matter is not subject to the vote of the House. The next parliamentary device is motion. The term motion in parliamentary parlance means any formal proposal made to the House by a member for the purpose of eliciting a decision of the House. It is phrased in such a way that if adopted, it will purport to express the judgment or will of the House. Any matter of importance can be the subject matter of a motion. The mover of a motion frames it in a form in which he or she wishes it ultimately to be passed by the House and on which a vote of the House can conveniently be taken. Motions may be classified into three broad categories, namely substantive motions, substitute motions and subsidiary motions. A substantive motion is a self-contained independent proposal made in reference to a subject which the mover wishes to bring forward. All resolutions, motions for election of the Speaker and Deputy Speaker and motion of thanks on the address by the President, etc. are examples of substantive motions. A substitute motion is moved in substitution of the original motion for taking into consideration a policy or situation or statement or any other matter. Amendments to substitute motions are not permissible. Subsidiary motions depend upon or relate to other motions or follow up on some proceedings in the House. A subsidiary motion has no meaning by itself and is not capable of stating the decision of the House without reference to the original motion or the proceedings of the House. Adjournment motion is the procedure for adjournment of the business of the House for the purpose of discussing a definite matter of urgent public importance which can be moved with the consent of the Speaker. The adjournment motion, if admitted, leads to setting aside of the normal business of the House for discussing the matter mentioned in the motion. An adjournment motion must raise a matter of sufficient public importance to warrant interruption of normal business of the House and the question of public importance is decided on merit in each individual case. The purpose of an adjournment motion is to take the government to task for a recent act of omission or commission having serious consequences. Its adoption is regarded as a sort of censor of the government. The government must always enjoy majority support in the popular house to remain in power. If need be, it has to demonstrate its strength on the floor of the house by moving a motion of confidence and winning the confidence of the house. In view of the constitutional provision regarding collective responsibility of the Council of Ministers to the Lok Sabha, a motion expressing want of confidence in an individual minister is out of order. Under the rules, only a motion expressing want of confidence in the Council of Ministers as a body is admissible. Rule 198 of the Rules of Procedure and Conduct of Business in Lok Sabha lays down the procedure for moving a motion of no confidence in the Council of Ministers. A motion of no confidence need not set out any grounds on which it is based. Even when grounds are mentioned in the notice and read out in the House, they do not form part of the no confidence motion. 
there is another parliamentary device called discussion under rule 193 it does not involve a formal motion before the house hence no voting can take place after discussion on matters under this rule the member who gives notice may make a short statement and such of the members as have previously intimated to the speaker may be permitted to take part in the discussion the member who raises the discussion has no right of reply at the end of the discussion the minister concerned gives a brief reply in order to provide opportunities to members to discuss matters of urgent public importance a convention was established in march 1953 which was incorporated later into the rules of procedure and conduct of business in lok sabha under rule 193 as short duration discussion under this rule members can raise discussion for short durations without a formal motion or vote thereon matters which are not points of order can be raised by way of special mentions under rule 377 This procedural device framed in 1954 provides opportunity to the members to raise matters of general public interest at present the number of matters that can be raised by members under rule 377 on a single day is 20 One of the most important parliamentary devices is the zero hour the time immediately following the question hour and laying of papers and before any listed business is taken up in the house has come to be popularly known as the zero hour as it starts around 12 noon this period is termed as zero hour for raising matters during the zero hour in lok sabha members give notice every day to the speaker stating clearly the subject which they consider to be important and wish to raise in the house it is for the speaker to allow or not to allow for raising such matters in the house the term zero hour is not formally recognized in our parliamentary procedure at present 20 matters per day as per their priority in the ballot are allowed to be raised during zero hour the order in which the matters will be raised is decided by the speaker at his or her discretion in the first phase five matters of urgent national and international importance as decided by the chair are taken up after question hour and laying of papers etc In the second phase the remaining admitted matters of urgent public importance are taken up after 6 pm or at the end of the regular business of the house however since there is no provision in the rules regarding zero hour hence there is no maximum limit on the number of matters that can be raised on any given day A resolution is a formal expression of the sense will or action of the legislative body resolutions can be broadly divided into three categories in the first category there are resolutions which are expressions of opinion by the house since the purpose of such a resolution is merely to obtain an expression of opinion of the house the government is not bound to give effect to the opinions expressed in these resolutions in the second category there are resolutions which have statutory effect the notice of a statutory resolution is given in pursuance of a provision in the constitution or an act of parliament such a resolution if adopted is binding on the government and has the force of law in the third category there are resolutions which the house passes in the matter of control over its own proceedings it has the force of law and its validity cannot be challenged in any court of law the house by such a resolution evolves its own procedure to meet a situation not specifically provided for in the rules a point of order relates to the interpretation or enforcement of the rules of procedure and conduct of business in the house or convention or such articles of the constitution as regulate the business of the house and raises a question which is within the cognizance of the speaker a point of order may be raised only in relation to the business before the house at the moment provided that the speaker may permit a member to raise a point of order during the interval between the termination of one item of business and the commencement of another if it relates to the maintenance of order or arrangement of business before the house a member may formulate a point of order and the speaker shall decide whether the point raised is a point of order and give the decision thereon which is final 
the constitution provides for an address by the president to either house or both houses assembled together the constitution also makes incumbent upon the president to address both houses of parliament assembled together at the commencement of the first session after each general election to the lok sabha and at the commencement of the first session each year and inform the parliament of the causes of its summons